honestly, we still really don't understand how the brain works. But we have, over the last 100 years or so, been able to start being able to decode what the brain does. So the simplest description is that it comprises of billions of neurons. Each of these neurons can be thought of as a tiny switch connected with lots of wires to other neurons and switches. And by passing electrical information along these, it acts as a large electrical circuit which governs everything we do from, from touch to movement to vision to how we think and how we feel. There are a number of ways that you can detect these electrical currents around the brain. The, the most accurate one is to put an electrode straight into the brain at the place you want to listen into. However, this involves drilling into the skull and putting electrodes into the brain, and, and that's very difficult. Another option is to put electrodes on the scalp, so you just place them on there, and measure the electrical potential on the scalp as an electrical current passes somewhere in the brain. But there's also a third way, and this is the way we're interested in. What you find is when an electrical current passes down a wire, it generates a tiny magnetic field. Now these magnetic fields are quite useful because they're not distorted as they pass through the skull, which means that if we can detect them, we can be quite accurate in locating where they came from. And it's these magnetic fields we're interested in. MEG works by taking the naturally occurring magnetic signals in the brain, and from detecting these signals, we can then identify where activity in the brain is happening. We use an array of sensors, and we look at what each sensor can see and find where in the brain that happens, much like with radar, the triangulating position of finding where the signal's coming from. The current MEG scanners are so big because in order to detect these signals, we have to use something called um, superconducting quantum interference devices. They need to be cooled down to minus 269 degrees, so they have to be kept in a vat of liquid helium. The new sensors that we're developing are something called optically pumped magnetometers, um, these are room temperature sensors, so we don't have to keep them cool. Also, don't have to keep them far away from the head. We can put them directly on someone's scalp. So, in order to keep the sensors on someone's head, we have to put them inside a sensor cast. And the way that we do that is we use a 3D printed one that's tailored particularly for the person being scanned. Um, this is based on their MRI scan, so it fits them perfectly. When we only had a few sensors, we used this one, and that fitted just over a particular region that we were interested in. But then as we started to get more and wanted to explore more regions, we moved up to this hedgehog looking one, which allows us to put sensors wherever we need them to be. The problem with it is it's tailored just for one person, so only that person can wear it. And another issue is it's quite scary, especially if it's a child that's going to put these on. They're not going to want to put a scary mask over their face. So what we did do instead is we've moved towards using a bike helmet. And by using this, it's something that children are familiar with. Um, they're more willing to put on. So using these new sensors where we can bring them into the scalp, fit them to whatever head size we want, we can start to look at how a child's brain develops. This will hopefully let us see how certain disorders come about, such as Asperger's or ADHD, several things that develop in childhood. We can use brain scanning like MEG, for example, to tell us about mental health by building up a picture of how the healthy brain functions using a lar really large group of people. Um, and then we can use this to compare with groups of people with specific mental illnesses and we can see where these differences lie and exactly what differences are occurring uh, in the people with mental illnesses. The advantage of the OPM system means that we can do experiments that we weren't able to do previously. And we've developed it up to the point where um, we are able to use the OPMs to measure people when they're moving their heads around, doing kind of almost sporting activities like bouncing a ping pong ball. That's something that we, we couldn't do with the other previous MEG system. There's the potential for using an immersive environment such as virtual reality in order to see how the brain is changing uh, in a more naturalistic way. And we can then use this information to perhaps tailor our therapies accordingly to help people more in their day-to-day -day lives. <laughs>